What is going on all you Pokemon collected maniacs out there? This is Ryan, the Pika Pika Papa, and today, this morning, I woke up bright and early. I was putting the final touches on this Brilliant Stars singles card video, right? I think there's all kinds of opportunity in the Brilliant Stars singles card space. Uh, and then when I pulled up the Pokemon Center website, guess what? Brilliant Stars was sold out. Now, I am shooting this video on Tuesday. You are going to be watching it on Friday. As I've said before, I travel for my real job, so I have to shoot content when I'm home, and then I air it when I'm on the road. Road. But listen, I want to say nothing is fundamentally changing, right? Nothing is any different. These singles cards, I still think I'm really, really bullish on, uh, even though Brilliant Stars is sold out. I don't, it doesn't change anything. If anything, I think by the time you watch this, some of these singles cards might have already started to make a jump, okay? So one of the reasons that I'm so bullish on the singles cards here in this space is because I recently did a video on Lost Origin from the exact same view. And what spurred this whole thought process up, right, is I'm always data-driven. I'm always looking for things to give me some idea of, hey, listen, and this is what happened in the past. Can I apply it to the present to give me some idea of what might happen in the future? And if you look at those two graphs down below, these are all of the sets from Sun and Moon and all of the sets from Sword and Shield. And then I take all of the singles cards and I put them into three different columns, okay? So if a card is over $100, it goes in the left column. If a card is between $50 and $100, it goes in the middle column. And if a card is between $30 and $50, it goes in that right column. Then on the far right, that is the total of all of the cards in that set that are greater than $30. And what really jumped off the page to me was the difference between the number of cards greater than $30 in Sun and Moon versus versus Sword and Shield. Listen, all of us are super bullish on Sword and Shield. That's why we're all going crazy for the Sealed product right now. A lot of people, myself included, think there's a lot of intangibles in the Sword and Shield era that is gonna give it this longevity. It's just gonna be one of the best eras that we have seen in recent memory. So when I look at those singles card prices from Sun and Moon, to me, I'm like, well, why wouldn't Sword and Shield follow the exact same path? One of the reasons we all love Sword and Shield so much is because it has amazing artwork. So you've got these epic sets, booster boxes are gonna be going through the roof. You have awesome artwork, like everything checks the boxes. So when I look at the Sword and Shield side, I compare it to the Sun and Moon and I look at Cosmic Eclipse, right? There are 20 cards in Cosmic Eclipse that are over $30. Then you get Unified Minds, 13. Unbroken Bonds, 13. You got Team Up, which is 20. Team Up is in a league all its own. And then even when you get down to Lost Thunder has nine, you get to Ultra Prism has 10. And I'm looking at Lost Origin and I'm looking at Brilliant Stars and I'm like, well, why won't Brilliant Stars and Lost Origin follow the same path? I think they are some absolute awesome sets. I think they are certainly in the same conversation as Unified Minds and Unbroken Bonds. And you can even put Fusion Strike up there and probably Chilling Rain as well when we're talking about sets that have some opportunity for some big price gains from the singles cards. So that was where this idea came up and that is why I'm looking at these right now and I'm gonna talk about some sleeper cards, I'm gonna talk about some of the big name cards and everything in between. So if you enjoy this type of data-driven content, hit that subscribe button. We do stuff like this all the time. If you have questions or comments, drop them down below. And if you like what you see, give us a big old thumbs up. Those three small things go a long way in helping my small channel out. And I really appreciate it. So the first thing I wanted to say was this. I told you I did this exact same view for Lost Origin about a week ago. Well, these were some of the big cards that we talked about. Obviously, the Lost Origin has sold out since then. Matter of fact, the day I launched that video was the exact day that Lost Origin sold out. And look at what these big chase cards are doing. Look at that Aerodactyl. It almost shoots straight up, right? The Rotom V, those two different Pikachus, all of them were on fire. But my takeaway from this was, look, all of them were already trending upward and to the right. Yes, we've seen a more aggressive price appreciation over the last week since these sold out, which obviously we would expect. And I'm thinking that we will see the same thing from Brilliant Stars. But most of these, with the exception of probably the Aerodactyl, the Aerodactyl was kind of flat there for a little bit, but most of these were already on an upward in the right trajectory. So I'm gonna be talking about one-year highs, I'm gonna be talking about where they are right now when we start talking about these Brilliant Stars singles, and I think that's an important thing to call out in the very beginning. So of course, for Brilliant Stars, we have these. These are the 15 top cards in Brilliant Stars right now. Now we have been doing data dives and research on this channel for a long, long time, and we all understand these top 15 cards will change, okay? We're going to talk about some sleepers cards and some hidden cards, some cards that might end up in this top 15. But this top 15, probably a year or two years from now, will fundamentally change. But two cards that will not drop from the top 15 are these two Charizards right here. And, um, down below, not only do we talk about the current price and the one-year graph right there, but we also talk about PSA 10 population, and I'll high-level talk about the gem rate as well, because I think that is very important. Now, the Charizard V right there is still below, that alt art is still below its one-year high, which is incredible. And if you look, again, I'm pulling this data on Tuesday morning, so I'm sure by the time Friday comes around, this car will have gone up a little bit in value. But if you look at it, it's still below its one-year high right there. And then if you look at that rainbow Charizard, that card is not only well below its one-year high, 
side, but it's barely up from its one year low still. It seems to be settling right in at $55. And in my honest opinion, as crazy as this is to say, when you look at those PSA 10 populations, you got the rainbow Zard right there. There's over 7,700 of those in PSA 10. And then you got the Charizard alt art right there. There's over 8,500 of those in PSA 10. Well, guess what? I think so many people are in love with Sword and Shield. I am not concerned about those high gem rates. I actually think that that alt art Charizard has some room to run. And believe it or not, I certainly think that the rainbow one does as well. Now, are these going to pop into three, four, five, seven hundred dollar cards further down the road? Who knows? That population is really, really huge. That is a big PSA 10 population. And I want everybody to remember, even if you are not a PSA collector, even if you don't care about having it in a slab, if you're a binder collector, like a high price for PSA 10 cards is important for raw card prices too because people are always out there trying to buy the best looking raw cards that they can and send them into PSA. So when you have a high PSA 10 price, that helps organically lift the raw card price too. And as I said, believe it or not, I actually think both these cards are a little bit undervalued right now. I think that Charizard V Alt Art is going to blow past its one year high here relatively soon. And I do think that that Charizard Rainbow right there is going to end up back up in the $70, $80 range in the long run as well. Now the next two cards I want to talk about are two of my favorites from the set. I I think these are two cards that are being absolutely slept on. That Arceus V, that is the card that I am most bullish on. That alt art, that Arceus, I love the artwork about it. I think it is absolute fire and it's sitting at $32 today. And now when you talk about the PSA 10 population, there's only 3,068 of those in a PSA 10 holder right now. Now that is a lot of cards, but guess what? When you compare that to the Charizards that we just looked at, one was at 7,700, the other one was at 8,500. Like for a top chase card from one of the top sets from one of the best eras of all time, I think this Arceus is flying really, really under under the radar and that art is absolutely fire. And then the same thing with that Luminion right there. I love that card. I think that card is awesome. Now, is it going to be a hundred dollar card one day? Probably not, but it's an alt art. It's from Brilliant Stars and you can get it in the $15 range right now, which is again, absolutely crazy to look at. So I love both of these cards. I think they're being slept on a little bit and I do think they have some solid upside to them. Now, next cards we're talking about, I, I have talked about these cards at nauseum for the last year. I love them. I love the artwork with them. I think these Sylveon cards, are absolute fire. I think the fact that one is in the $13 range right now and then the VMAX is sitting there in the $18 range, I think these cards have a lot of upside to them. Again, not sure if these will ever be a $100 card, but could they get to a $30, $35, $40 card in the long run? Absolutely. Now, I know different trainer gallery cards have different pull rates, and then when you look at them down below, you know, you got a really high gem rate for both of them, okay? So when you look at the Sylveon V right there, there's 1,122 of those in PSA 10s right now, and only 1,958 of them have been submitted. So we're talking about a ridiculously high PSA 10 gem rate. And then when you look at the VMAX down there, it's an even higher gem rate, right? 2100 in PSA 10 versus 2800 submitted. So the thing you have to consider when you're looking at these cards, which are kind of in the mid to low range from a price perspective, is that there are a lot of these that are probably in gem mint condition, but they just haven't been sent to PSA yet, right? Because the risk versus reward isn't there. If you send this in and you get a nine, you're done. If you send this in and you get a 10, congratulations, you bought the card for $15, you spent $15, $20 to get it graded, and now you're sitting on a $55, $60 card. There's just not that much upside there. So when the raw prices, if and when the raw price to start to go up, I fully expect these PSA 10 populations to go up as well. And again, it's a little concerning to me to see the gem rates that high because it makes me feel like once these prices go up, we could see the market be flooded with these because even though Brilliant Stars is sold out on the Pokemon Center, I think there is still a lot of Brilliant Stars left to be open in the next year. So more of these will hit the market, really high gem rate, but overall, I think from a raw card perspective, these got some serious legs to them. Now, Next one's right here. These ones that have not waited at all. The Umbreons have just absolutely shot up. Now it might be a buyout. People might be jumping all over it right now because we all had a sneaky feeling that Brilliant Stars was going to be sold out pretty soon. I certainly didn't think it was going to be sold out this close to Lost Origin. I think the VMAC, art, VMAX artwork is absolute fire. Not a huge fan uh, of the V over there, but I do think that these cards have some upside. The other thing, and I've said this again about Umbreon overall in the Sword and Shield era, since we have the Moonbreon as that big chase card for the entire era, right? That's the big, big dog from the big, big set, you know, Evolving Skies, Moonbreon. I do think that Umbreon overall in the Sword and Shield um, era is just going to see some organic lifts. So I do expect these cards uh, to hold their prices, but man, these spiked up immediately overnight. That V is well above one-year highs, and that VMAX is finally right at, if not a little bit above one-year highs. Now, when you look at the gem rates down there, again, you got some really, really high gem rates. Those VMAX cards, they almost just print gems. It's absolutely insane. So you got 3,600 of those in a PSA 10 holder versus 
versus 4,600 of them submitted. And then the V has a much lower gem rate, okay? So you have 1,876 of them in a PSA 10 holder versus 3,281 of them submitted. So a little over 50% from a gem rate overall. So, I mean, if I was a betting man, I don't know. I think they're both going to perform really, really well, but I like the fact that the V has a much lower gem rate. But then again, I love the art on the V Max. You can't go wrong. It's Umbreon, it's Sword and Shield. Like these cards are going to do absolute fire. Also, brilliant stars. I mean, what a great kicker there. So, the next cards we're talking about right here. These are some of the sleeper cards. Now, I looked at these early trainer gallery cards from the Lost Origin set when we did that video, and guess what? You had Charizard, you had Pikachu, you had Gengar. Like, that is where the heat is at. No offense to Eevee, Flareon, and Vaporeon right here, but they just don't carry the same amount of heat as those three cards. But listen, even though they don't have the same amount of heat, the absolute artwork is awesome. I love it. These are fun. These are engaging. They're incredibly cheap. These are like $2 cards right now. And when you look at the gem rates right there, they are much harder than those Vs and those V maxes that we have seen in the past. Each of these have less than a thousand in PSA 10 holders right now. Again, word of caution, right? If these start to spike in price, then I guarantee you'll see a whole lot of these hit that PSA grading slab because guess what? A lot of people aren't paying to have them graded right now. You can probably pick this up in a PSA 10 holder in the $40, $50 range. But I do think that these have some opportunities. Are they going to be top 15 cards? Probably not. But can these get to $10 cards each? Again, in a long-term time horizon, like 10, 15 years, I think they could. The artwork's awesome. Obviously, some big name Pokemon. And I think they got some really cool upside to them as well. And the final one right here, these are my final three picks, okay? So listen, we'll start with the Zapdos over there. Zapdos is like the sneaky great character from Pokemon, okay? Every time we pull these grading report videos, every time we look at the volume at PSA, Zapdos is always there up at the very top. I don't know why. It doesn't get a lot of love, or at least I don't hear a lot of love in my circle, but I think this is a really sneaky card. Absolutely cratered down there at a one-year low at $7.50. I think that's a great pickup. Then you have the Pikachu V right there. Again, you're talking about one of the best sets from the Sword and Shield era, and you got the Pikachu full art right there. It's down at $5. Again, is this a card that's going to pop up to $40, $50 in the long run? Absolutely not. But could this get to be a $15 card in enough time, and is it just an awesome one to have in the collection? Absolutely. And then the one I saved for last, and the one in the very middle, that Mimikyu right there, I love that card. I love everything about it. I think the art is awesome. I love how they're in a spring field. I love how the sunshine is coming down, and she's just chilling on the giant Mimikyu chest. Like I love that art as a whole. It's already a top 50 15 card. The price right now is right around $15. I could totally see this being a sneaky card and being something none of us had on our radar and it just ends up popping up in the long run. So with all of that being said, listen, I enjoy doing these types of videos. I love looking at the cards that are already at the top. I love talking about cards that maybe are flying under the radar a little bit. I can't wait to launch this video on Friday and see where all of these cards are actually at now that Brilliant Stars is sold out. It's going to be absolutely insane. So if you made it to the end and you enjoy the content, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you got questions or comments, drop them down below. And as always, if you like what you see, give us a big old thumbs up. I thank you so much for watching. I can't possibly thank you enough. I appreciate you more than I can say. I hope you have a great one and I'll talk to you all later. See everybody. Bye.